Hey guys, Alex Cyclist here back with the reason why I chose the Spark over, and let's just say an S-Works Epic Evo. So if you have been following along with the channel, great, appreciate it. Thank you for the support. If this is your first time here, I'd urge you to please hit that like and subscribe button. It helps grow the channel, helps support the channel. And uh, so let's kind of dig into it here. So if you've been following along with the channel, I've owned two Epics in a row. Uh, I had a 19 Epic Expert, which I've upgraded, and then I also had a 22 S-Works Epic that I built from a frame up, but basically spec'd it like I would have got a complete bike if I would have got the complete bike or if it was available at the time. So <clears throat> why I chose the Spark and why I replaced it with my primary, as my primary bike over my Epic. So when I got the Epic, I built it up, you know, I spent probably 12.5, you know, I got a discount on some parts, you know, after I added the Axis dropper, you're, you're, you're talking probably close to 12.5, close to 13,000 if you would have paid retail for everything. So, you know, I built this bike and I, I just felt like it was a total package. It looked like it was a total package. I, I love the bike. But then I blew the brain at 500 miles. You know, then I started feeling like in my head that the bike was delicate. Um, you know, I'm not a race team. I don't have someone stand by to, to rebuild the shock every time it goes bad. And shock shouldn't be going bad at 500 miles. So I did replace it with the race day damper, uh, which made the, the shock actually way better. Um, way more active, a lot smoother, hurt my, uh, it took a lot of the pain and, and stiffness out of my neck and my shoulders after a ride because the brain uh, is pretty relentless, especially if you're keeping it towards middle or, or full firm. Yeah, it does open up, but uh, it's just not a very very active shock and it's not a very good shock to be, to be honest. In terms of the fork, I'm saying, the rear was actually very, very good. But, you know, after I got the race day damper in, I was like, you know what, I also do miss the firm platform to push against when I'm climbing, right? When the brain was activated, if it was smooth and I had to stand up on the pedals, you know, I, I was missing a little bit of that surge and maybe I could have fixed that if I had a remote, you know, just just basically, you know, kind of like the spark where I was just locking out the front suspension. I'm like, well, wait a minute here. If I'm gonna go with a remote, right? If that's gonna be my answer to taking a normal shock now and outside of a brain shock back to what we call standard, options here right so i'm like you know what l l let's rethink this so then i started thinking all right maybe maybe i'll just try an epic evo right i tried an epic evo it was a great bike it's light i could have swapped over 100 percent of my parts including the cranks that i had um you know it's your standard dub cranks these are the dub wide at 55 chain line so i could have swapped over the handlebars the brakes everything but the fork which i could have just found a fork you know a fox factory for 900 bucks or a sid uh, ultimate for for 900 bucks whatever and call it a day so that really didn't appeal to me because i've written a a evo my friend's evo which is a great bike but i wanted control over the suspension so i think all right so let me put a remote on it right but then i rode the suspension in fox's middle mode which firms it up just a little bit it was way too mushy for me to call it a middle traction mode, race mode, whatever you want to call it, and or, like, or, or Fox and Specialized call it trail, the middle of the um, that shock, the middle setting, and uh, the DPS shock. And I just like, you know what? You know, I have a Spark in Florida. I've ridden a Spark three, four bikes ago. I owned a Spark with a twin lock. And, you know, I'm thinking, you know, I do want more suspension. I do want to take less stress off the body, you know, avoid more of that trail feedback so I feel more refreshed and can ride longer and ride faster. And basically at the point where I'm like, you know what, the Evo is just not going to do it for me. You know, I have to put a remote on it and then I'm not going to be happy because the middle mode isn't as firm as I want. And yes, I can swap it out to a RockShox, Sid Lux, um, and then I can have an open and close. But then I'm like, wait a minute. No, I don't want just an open and close. I want a middle mode where it firms up the suspension to be more racier, right? When when the trail, uh, you know, can, can justify that. So basically, I'm like, you know what? The Spark is still the total package. It's 120, right? Front and rear. And the middle mode, right, of the Scott, right? brings travel from 120 to 80, right? The bike sits higher in its stroke, therefore increasing bottom bracket height clearance. You're able to pedal over um, more roots and, and, and rocks, right? It handles better in the corners. You can pedal through the corners so you don't have to pedal clip. And basically felt that this was the, the complete package here. So I can run it open, right? Middle mode, traction mode reduces travel, firms up the fork nicely and definitely firms up the rear and reduces travel to only 80 millimeters. And then obviously you have your, your full lockout with a blow off, right? Front and rear. 
And you know, it's just easy to switch it right back into middle mode. And then here we are again in full open, right? We'll call it the set. And then you got your nice dropper lever here. So we have a full cockpit here of control over the bike and not just relying on the brain when it wants to activate slowly or if it's rough terrain where you wish you had a little bit of a softer setting on, you know, for that section of track. Well, you can't modify that. You know, when I was on 100 millimeters, I was being bounced around a few times in a couple of the courses that were rocky and it was just being tossed around and I felt like I lost so much momentum where this bike just eats it up, you know, just rolls and barrels through everything. Yeah, it's a, it's a little less than a, I would say it was, my Epic was 22.8 with pedals, right? And this bike is 23.5. Uh, being a 120 mil bike and you know to have a little bit extra weight penalty you can't feel that really on the trail at all you can't feel the weight what you can feel is the 2.4 aspen a little slower to to spin up out of a, out of a corner if you have to go into a, a braking situation but outside of that these tires and the width that this bike can accommodate uh, with these 2.4s, it gives you more confidence. It gives you better handling in the corner. You can lean the bike over harder. There's less, there's less drift in the tire. And again, you're getting a complete package here with no compromise. No compromise. You know, you can build this bike up probably less than 23 pounds if you went with the SL frame set. Uh, this is not far off with pedals. Um, you know, I was able to get my hands on a Team Black from GC Performance. And uh, yeah, so here we are at 23.5 pounds and is a full, full on send it, but cross country bike. So I, I'm really impressed with it. I'm glad I made this decision. I own the same bike in central, um, in South Florida. So I knew that this was going to be a good option for, for New Jersey as well. And again, I was just looking for more complete control. I'm not taking anything away from the S-Works. You know, they're great bikes. They're race bikes exclusively. They're not as capable, uh, unless they're, maybe they're in the hands of a pro. But I just felt that I want something that was a little bit more forgiving, but it still had the race feel to it. And uh, this bike is definitely the total package. You know, I just felt that the Evo... Right, it would have been an easy swap for me. It would have been, it would actually cost less than than purchasing this bike and swapping some parts over, because all I needed was a fork. But I just knew that something would be still missing. And for me, it's that racier middle mode. Um, a buddy of mine just got an Epic Evo, and um, he said, you know, this bike is fantastic. It's fast. You know, it's lively. But I just wished it climbed a little better. You know, and and I felt that uh, in my other friend's S Works Evo. And this is the solution. You know, you need a remote. And having that middle mode be more reflective of a firmer platform to push against, right? Not as active, not as squishy, you know, is important to me personally. And that's why I chose the, uh, the Spark here. So I'm very happy with my, my purchase. I'm really looking forward to get more miles and get a, a full race season on this bike so I can get a real good comparison. But I already know from four rides that this bike is significantly more capable. It's more fun, right? It doesn't hurt as much. You're able to ride longer, ride harder. And it's just, it's just a more exciting bike to ride because it doesn't hurt you. And uh, it, it rewards you for going fast instead of a uh, 100 mil, you know, epic that kind of hurt me uh, uh, instead of rewarding me to go fast. Because again, the, the way that the brain platform works is it's basically an automatic lockout based on a, a mass brass that is that's floating technically and can sense uh, feedback from underneath the wheels and tires. Uh, and it worked well. I liked it. I liked it a lot. But... You know, I just felt like at some times I wish I was able to actually dial it in several times on a trail, right, and make it more accommodating to certain sections of, of the course. Uh, and you're just not able to do that unless you get off your bike where you, know, you can do the, the, um, the crown adjust, right, the five-foot crown adjust on that bike. But, uh, again, you got to get off for the rear. I just felt like, you know, yeah, I wanted it firm, you know, in a lot of areas. And, yes, it does open up, but, you know, the – the racy version of that bike is to keep it on full firm and really maximize that that firm platform. So, and in doing so, you're going to pay a price in your neck, your shoulders, your back, uh, and it is what it is. It's a race bike, right? It was great. I loved it. It was cool. It was flashy. It was beautiful. It was like a it's like jewelry. But again, I'm looking for a total package. And and for me personally, that bike wasn't it. And for me, the Evo wouldn't have been it either. Either, um, you know, I just I just know that I made the right decision based on how I wanted my bike to feel and having complete control um of of the uh the suspension and again unique to scott's nude shock right proprietary nude shock that reduces that travel uh from 120 to 80 so 
just wanted to get that feedback. I've gotten some comments, uh, kept asking me, you know, what did I do? Why did I do that? Why did I choose this? Why did I choose the Evo? And uh, that's kind of it in a nutshell. So if you have any questions, continue to please uh, leave those in the comments. And I really appreciate the support and views and uh, keep the dialogue going. Thank you. Be well.